Good day, Paul Harvey fans. In times when Paul Harvey was too sick to broadcast, he had the main writer of his The Rest of the Story series to stand in his place. The man Paul Harvey trusted unendingly and whom he allowed to record the series was his son, Paul Jr. This is one of those stories. Now, the rest of the story. Eleven years after Charles Lindbergh's historic transatlantic flight, a 31-year-old pilot named Douglas Corrigan also flew the Atlantic. He insisted unintentionally. Doug Corrigan was a mechanic at the Northrop Corporation Aircraft Works in Inglewood, California, and when his summer vacation time rolled around in July of 1938, he decided to take an airplane trip in his own airplane. He had procured the craft at an auction six years previous for $900. It was a second-hand Curtis Robin monoplane with an old Wright J6 engine, a real flying crate, top speed about 95 miles an hour. Anyway, Doug thought it might be fun to take Lizzie, that's what he called his plane, to fly her from Los Angeles to New York. Doug's friends saying good luck were thinking goodbye. But at least there'd be ground under him all the way. In an emergency, he could land if he had to. So Doug and his rickety flying Lizzie took off from Los Angeles and headed east. But Lizzie didn't want to come down out of the clouds. For 2,700 miles, she stayed aloft. And roughly 27 hours later, she and Doug had landed safely at New York's Roosevelt Field. There were some raised eyebrows, but no spectacular publicity accompanying Doug Corrigan's non-stop journey coast to coast. It had been a pleasant experience, he said, but now he must return home. At dawn the next morning, Doug informed the manager of the airfield that he was going back to California, and clearance was granted. Doug boarded his faithful Lizzie, and once more they took off into the blue yonder, but... But then he disappeared... What I mean to say is that all day and all the next night there was no trace of Doug or Lizzie. By the following morning it was official, Douglas Corrigan was missing. It was well into the second day and an ocean away that an American plane was spotted streaking over Belfast, Ireland. Ireland. And yes, it was Lizzie and Doug Corrigan. An hour later, they'd found their way to Baldonnell Airport near Dublin, and among Doug's first words as he opened the cockpit door were, Where am I? Informed, he expressed surprise, saying he'd hoped he had returned to California. I must have flown the wrong way, they heard him say. Of course, when the American press learned what had happened, they gave Doug a nickname. Wrong Way, they called him. Wrong Way Corrigan. And despite the skeptics, Doug stuck to his story, claimed he'd set his compass incorrectly, insisted he and Lizzie had climbed up into the clouds beyond the sight of land or sea, and next thing they knew, they were in Ireland. Do you believe it? Well, maybe you shouldn't. Because the year previous, in 1937, Doug Corrigan had applied for permission to make a solo transatlantic flight. But after inspecting his plane, old Lizzie, the Bureau of Air Commerce denied permission, told Doug he could not fly the Atlantic Ocean because, because his plane would never make it. Only now you know the rest.